is a great idea, first of all, to award uh, you know the decent books about Russia, and uh, I think that for uh, Pushkin House in London, it's perhaps it's uh, one of the major tasks to. to Uh, promote uh, Russian studies to promote uh, popularization of Russian history and culture. I was really surprised how many non-fiction books, uh, you know, were published uh, about, about Russia in one year. Well, I think given that there is such tension and misunderstanding between Russia and the West at the moment, it's a wonderful thing to try to focus on some of the creative works and some of the history that has um, can help inform a real dialogue between uh, Russia and the West at the moment, and that's very much what the Pushkin Prize does. I think it exposes us all to different perspectives, different vantage points, different understandings of our mutual history, and I think that's a very valuable thing to do. When we started the uh, Pushkin House Book Prize six years ago, it was a bit uncertain. We didn't quite know, um, you know what the demand would be like, what the appetite would be like, what the level of quality of books, whether we could sustain this but it's actually grown from strength to strength. The one thing that's changed perhaps, if you like, if anything, is, is the need for this prize. And obviously as tensions and difficulties and rhetoric intensify, um, I think you know, never before have we needed this sort of safe space to really encourage great scholarship and great writing and thinking and research, all of which we try to reward. One of the things we wanted to make sure was that the, that the books that we promoted and that the books we reward in this prize are not only insightful, uh, insightful about Russia, insightful about the relationship between Russia and other countries, about Russian life, either in history or now, but also accessible. Um, so I think one of the um, things that united the judges was that uh, we wanted to make sure that this was not just a prize which would be accessible to the specialist. That this really should, if at all possible, be a window uh, onto a Russian world which anyone could open and anyone could peer through. One of the remarkable things about Ronald Reagan was he suddenly realized a truth which surprised him. The Russians are as scared of us as we are of them. He said, that's ridiculous. He says, we're not going to attack the Russians, but they don't know that. That was a great insight, a very important one, and it was quite rare during the Cold War. My choice uh, was uh, related with my fears. I was afraid to leave my usual social groups and uh, go to other people. And uh, all this book, it's my struggle against uh, my fears. One of my favorite diaries is by an 11-year-old who wrote on a calendar. Uh, and the calendar was imprinted with quotations of Lenin and Stalin and also had a feature where it would tell you what happened on that day in history. And he wrote his version as an 11-year-old of what happened on his day in history. It took me a while to decide how to begin the book, but I always knew how it was going to end, that it was going to end with an epilogue about Trifonov, about his work, about the way in which he, in effect, chronicled the Russian Revolution and the lives of his parents, his neighbors, his friends in that building, um, in effect, the fate. The book opens with um, a quote from Gorbachev that he said to Bill. I think he, when he met Bill, maybe after the third or fourth time, he said, how is it going? And Bill replied slowly, and he said, yes, um, Gorbachev is difficult to understand. And he often would talk about himself in the third person. Stalin's meteorologist is the story of one man, Alexei Wangenheim, who was the head of the meteorological department of the USSR. And he was an absolute hero for Stalin. He invented um, weather forecasting in the USSR. He was actually um, envisaging a global weather forecasting system. So he was a real pioneer and a great hero. It's a very special prize. It's a, it's a sympathy prize. It's a commendation prize. It's, it's a prize that the jury, I think, just felt they had to give because that's how they felt like. And this is a, a prize to um, 
the best book in, in, in translation. Congratulations, Vika, as one Russian to another. Here are the flowers, and here's the prize. <laughs> to you and to your translator. And we've chosen a work which um, we found particularly unusual for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it is in many ways an academic work, and yet one which deals with profoundly human, in fact, heartbreakingly human uh, uh, circumstances. The winner of this year's uh, Pushkin Prize, Alexis Perry for The War Within. We want to acknowledge the blockadniki, uh, especially those who kept diaries and whose descendants shared their diaries with me. I continue to be just awed by their tremendous perseverance, their intellectual prowess, their creativity, and the courage they had to write down so many of their thoughts uh, and observations, which have left us with this incredible record, uh, an intimate glimpse of what life was like during the siege. So I would uh, dedicate this award to, to them, to the Blockade Nikia.